Remember we were wondering uh, what voting rule we should pick. And so we talked about some voting rules and some properties, which you know most of them are highly intuitive and, and reasonable. And so now we are going to look at or talk about what voting rules satisfy those properties. Uh, well, uh, we're going to start with very famous impossibility theorem uh, uh, by Arrow uh, in his 1951 paper. Uh, this is his theorem. If there are at least three candidates, so the number of uh, candidates in set X is greater than or equal to three, and if we look at all the possible preference profiles, all right? So uh, preferences over alternatives are unrestricted. The only restriction we have, remember, is the indifference. So we don't have any indifference. So other than that, all utility functions are potentially possible. Well, then in this environment, there exists no voting rule which satisfies all the six axioms we talked about. Pareto principle, anonymity, neutrality, independence of irrelevant alternatives, decisiveness, and uh, what was, oh, I forgot. Um, decisiveness and uh, ordinality, okay? Uh, well, so it's impossible to find a voting rule which satisfy all six axioms. Uh, well, this is an impossibility theorem. Uh, it's a bad news. Uh, how can I get rid of, uh, you know, this impossibility result? I mean, okay, maybe we don't have uh, sort of a voting rule which gives us all we want, but why don't we give up some of those axioms? So that's one way or one direction of research. Another direction of research is, well, why do we really care about the entire unrestricted domain of preferences. So for some problems, we know that uh, all preferences are not really possible. Uh, I mean, I know we did not really talk about domain restrictions before, and I don't uh, plan to talk about it in this course. Um, but for example, uh, I don't know for those who may or may not have known this, uh, there is a preference domain which is called as uh, um, single picked preferences. It basically says uh, the agents, all agents can basically put the alternatives on some sort of order and then they have one best, first best, and then as they move away from this alternative, the other alternative gets worse and worse, okay? So you have a top alternative and then all the other alternatives are worse than this. But the thing is, everybody has just one such nice uh, uh, top alternative or best alternative. So let's say this is one agent. This is another agent. He has, you know, all these, uh, you know, his, his best is this one. And then as he moves away from his best alternative, everything gets worse and worse and worse. Well, this is actually pretty reasonable domain of preferences. Because remember, in, if you think of this as like a political spectrum, you know, from extreme left to extreme right. Um, and so political party, uh, so this is like hoteling problem. So political parties actually condition them, uh, not condition them, but sort of locate them on this political spectrum, assuming that it is one dimensional political spectrum. Well, then uh, everybody, every voter would like to vote uh, for the party who thinks exactly like himself. And so that would be his or her first best. And as they, you know, uh, move toward, you know, farther from his ideal point, he 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 prefers that those alternatives or candidates less and less. All right. So, for example, in a voting situations, that preference domain again, it's called a uh, single peaked preferences. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense. Or sometimes we have expected utility theory, right? I mean, here, the, all the utility functions are allowed. But what if the voters are expected utility uh, type of guys? I mean, not all utilities are okay. But, you know, we restrict our attention to some preference domain. So let's not give up our, uh, you know, axioms. But, you know, try to get rid of, you know, uh, some preference relations, which we think 
in our problem is not relevant. And so can we find uh, possibility results under some domain restrictions? So that's another uh, direction of research. And uh, well, there's a lot of research on, on, on this, uh, on both directions, but I'm going to just mention you two uh, results. Well, the first one says the following. Remember the majority rule? Well, I call it FC. The C corresponds to uh, Condorcet. So the majority rule, FC, in fact, satisfies all six axioms on domain U, if and only if U does not contain Condorcet cycles. Huh, okay. I don't know what that means because I haven't talked about Condorcet cycles yet, which I will at the end with an example. But the thing is, let's just leave it as is, like if the domain satisfies that it doesn't have a Condorcet cycles, whatever it means, well then under this domain, which is obviously not this, according to this theorem, well then under this domain, in fact, majority rule satisfies all those six properties, which is awesome. So maybe we should we should, we should uh, you know, look uh, domains, preference domains, which doesn't contain Condorcet cycles. Well, again, I'm going to come to this, uh, you know, what it means, yeah, the domain does not contain Condorcet cycles. But let's talk about the second theorem. It says, if a voting rule F satisfy all our six axioms on some domain U, well, then you know what? Uh, the majority rule also satisfy those axioms, all right? So in that sense, those two theorems say that uh, Condorcet, I'm sorry, the majority rule is actually, you know, in some way, uh, a, a better rule than all the other rules. Uh, so that's kind of the message those two theorems are trying to uh, give. So what I'm going to do is, is, is talk about, for the rest of this uh, lecture, is the U, the domain, doesn't contain Condorcet cycle. What does that mean? And in fact, I don't know if you heard of Condorcet paradox, but here's an example. So the majority rule, remember, uh, looks at head-to-head uh, -head competition. And if there is a winner, uh, you know, if a candidate uh, beats all the other candidates in the majority sense, only when we focus on these two candidates, well, then that will become the majority uh, winner or the Condorcet winner. Uh, well, but sometimes uh, for some preference profiles, uh, the Condorcet uh, is going to give us a cycle. So here is one example. So think of that, you know, there's, you know, rather than utility functions, there are three individuals, three voters. Voter one says X is better than Y, Y is better than Z. Uh, voter two says, well, Y is better than Z and Z is better than X. And then finally, uh, three says Z is better than uh, X and X is better than Y. Okay, so now let's look at X versus Y. So which one beats which one? Well, X is better than Y, Y is better than X, X is better than Y. So two voters are going to vote for X over Y. So therefore X beats Y. Good. Well, what about Y versus uh, Z? Well, Y is better than Z. Y is better than Z. So you know what? Two guys, the majority votes for Y. So therefore Y beats Z. Well, what about X versus Z? So, I mean, here, if I look at these two info, I can say, you know what? The majority prefers X to Y. A majority prefers Y to Z. But what about X to Z? Can I say that majority prefers X to Z? All right, X is better than Z. Z is better than Z, X. Z is better than X. So, you know what? Majority actually prefers Z to X. All right. Okay. So that's exactly what I mean by cycle. All right. So if I have X, Y, Z, so X is better than Y. All right. So when we are given X versus Y, you know, majority, majority is going to vote for X. And when it becomes Z and Y, Y is going to be the majority's choice. But when it's given X and Z, well, I forgot to write it, Z beats 
x. Okay? Um, so the problem is, where am I going to sum? I mean, which one should I pick? You know, should I pick x? No, it doesn't beat everyone. It's not the Condorcet winner. Z? No, it's not a Condorcet winner because y beats z. Is it y? No, because x beats uh, y. But is it x? No, z beats x. So this is the cycle. We call it Condorcet cycle. And so in this uh, case, by the way, the Condorcet rule f uh, gives us uh, everything, x, y, z. So you have to break the cycle uh, you know, you have to break the tie in some uh, tie-breaking rule. So, if the domain doesn't allow a preference domain like this, where we may get Condorcet cycle, if our domain of preferences is free from such constructs, well, then you know what? Uh, majority rule is a rule, a rule, not the rule, is a rule, which satisfy all our six properties. So, this is what it means.